Well, good morning. Good to see each and every one of you here today, and I want to wish each and every one of you a very happy Easter Resurrection Sunday. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Because He lives, uh, we can live, and because He lives, all fear is gone. And I love, I tell you what, every Sunday is Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, but today there's something special. Today is kind of like I'm a sports fan. For those of you that are sports fans, you'll understand this analogy. Today's kind of like the Super Bowl, right? Today's the Super Bowl of, uh, of Christendom, and uh, there is just great, uh, and, and we kind of know how the game's going to come out. Uh, you know, <laughs> we win, right? And uh, because he wins, because he won, I should say, we win. And uh, we're here just to, just to celebrate that. Thank you, praise team, for a wonderful time of just praising and worshiping God, and uh, uh, we thank you for, for that. Well, during the month of March, we've been in a series of messages entitled Hope. And how many of you would just raise your hand and probably say, I know someone that needs some hope today? Uh, matter of fact, you might want to raise both hands, all right? Uh, as we look at the world today, uh, there is no shortage of people who need hope, uh, especially in light of the current events in, uh, in Europe, in, in the city of Brussels, uh, with continued acts of, of terrorism and war. Uh, there are people uh, around the world, uh, across America, in our city, and, and dare I say probably in, even in our churches this morning, who need hope. And, uh, and so we've just been looking at that over the past few weeks. And if you've missed any of our, our, uh, our message series, you can go on our YouTube channel, and uh, we videotape and record all of our of our messages, and they're archived there for you to, uh, to uh, be blessed by. So, uh, so we thank you for, for being here today. And we've looked at, uh, in particular, the definition of hope. What is hope? Hope is defined um, as to believe, to desire, to rely, and to trust upon. Hope is uh, the belief that what is wanted can be had, uh, or that events will turn out for the best. Uh, hope is believing uh, the best is yet to come. Hope is believing that tomorrow is going to be better than today. That's what hope is. hope is. Hope is actually the bedrock and the foundation for our faith in Jesus Christ. Hope is the soil out of which the seed of faith grows. So if you don't have hope, you can't have faith. Uh, the definition of faith in Hebrews 11 verse 1 is this. It is the substance of things hoped for. Uh, in other words, if we have hope, we can plant our faith in the soil, and it's just a matter of time before we see the manifestation and the substance of our faith, that thing that we hoped for. So uh, today, I believe that uh, uh, we need, uh, above all anything, to renew our hope today in, uh, in Jesus Christ. A uh, hope is both a verb, something that we do, uh, but it's also a person. I'm going to talk about that person here in just a little bit. Psalm uh, 25 verse 5 says, My hope is in God all day long. In other words, uh, hope has an object. Hope has a, uh, has a destination. And we as Christ followers, uh, believers in Jesus Christ today, our hope uh, is not in the things of this world. It's not in the systems of this world. It's not in a, uh, it's not in a government. It's not in uh, an establishment or uh, some type of institution that has been created and made by man. Our hope is in the one who created everything. Our hope is in uh, the God of heaven and the God of earth. The psalmist goes on to say in Psalm uh, 31, 24, Be strong and take heart, all you who what? Hope in the Lord. So one of the greatest blessings and benefits that we receive by putting our faith and our trust and our hope in the Lord is that it gives a person strength. It gives a person, in particular, strength of heart. Now, when the Bible talks about the word heart, uh, it's not talking about the organ in your chest. Uh, it's talking about your spirit man. It's talking about your soul. And, it, and hope has that kind of uh, benefit uh, to those who have it in the Lord, that there's strength that comes to you. Uh, the the moment that you put your faith and trust in God, uh, you're filled with strength. Your heart uh, that once was maybe depressed and discouraged and dismayed in life now receives 
um, hope and life and light and energy and power. Uh, the psalmist went on to say in Psalm 42, verse 5, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your what? Hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. So that's a rhetorical question. He's kind of having a self-talk there. He's kind of looking at himself and saying, Why are you so downcast? Why are you discouraged? Why are you dismayed? Your hope's in God. And I want to say that to Christians and Christ followers uh, everywhere this morning. You know, we above all people, despite what's going on in the world, despite what has happened, what hasn't happened, our hope is in God. Our hope is in the Lord. So why are we downcast? Why are you fearful? Why are you dismayed? Why are you getting nervous? You know, there's, there's this shaking. Can you kind of sense the shaking even in America? There's this instability. For the first time in my life, I, it's, 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 I just don't recognize America. And there's, there's this shaking. There's this nervousness. The people are frantic with fear. And, 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 but those of us that, are, that have our hope in the Lord, we need not be dismayed. We need not be discouraged because our hope isn't in a politician. It's not in a candidate. It's not in, in, in the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, the Tea Party, or the Barbie Party. Our hope is what? Our hope is in God. Our hope is in God. Amen. So God has come to, uh, to give our world hope. And, uh, but I also recognize that there are times, there are times in our lives, even as believers, where life knocks and punches the hope right out of us. It seems to, to come and try to convince us that there is no hope. Uh, maybe the, the dark clouds of depression have, have blown into your life. Maybe there have been times and seasons where you've been discouraged, you've been dismayed, you've been, dare I say, depressed and discouraged. And, and, and the enemy comes to kind of whisper in our ears that our lives are over. All right? The situation that you might be facing is, is terminal. Uh, matter of fact, let me begin this message by saying and asking you a question today. Have you, have you ever placed your faith and trust in someone to come through for you only to have them disappoint and let you down? Have you ever been there? Have you ever done that? If you have, you're certainly not alone. You're certainly not alone. If you haven't, <clears throat> well, I have, some, I have some bad news for you. Uh, it's just a matter of time before people will let you down. It's just a matter of time. I mean, because before, before your parents let you down, your friends let you down, your employer let you down, uh, your children let you down, your grandchildren. And, and I, let me just go ahead and say, it's just a matter of time before your pastor let you down. Because none of us are perfect. None of us uh, are going to get it right all the time. So, so if you can answer yes to that question, welcome to the human race. As humans, we seem to place, I've learned this, our greatest amount of faith and trust in those we love and care about the most. When these people, these special people, let us down, refuse to keep their promises, or just simply don't meet our expectations of them, we're left feeling hurt, used, and maybe even abused. Betrayal and depression are oftentimes the emotions experienced on the backside of a great disappointment or letdown in life. And our hearts and lives are left troubled asking, is there any hope? I mean, I put my hope in the one person that, that I thought would come through for me, and they even let me down. Well, this is the state in which we find the family, the followers, and the disciples of Jesus some 2,000 years ago on this very morning. You see, they had placed, think about this, their entire faith, their entire trust, and their entire hope in this man from Galilee. Many of them had left their family. Many of them had left their friends. Many of them had left their careers and businesses to follow this one that they believed to be the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Jesus' disciples 100% believed in him. And they put their faith and trust in him Nothing held back. They left it all because they so believed in him. They thought for sure this third trip to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover festival would be the time of his coronation as king. 
There was great expectation in their hearts and minds. And in fact, every one of Jesus' followers, as they gathered in the city of Jerusalem some 2,000 years ago this week, Jesus' disciples sang praises to him on Palm Sunday as he rode into the city to shouts of Hosanna. You can sense the, the great expectation. John 12 quotes this for us. They sang, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Now that word Hosanna literally is defined as the Lord saves or the Lord delivers, or the Lord heals, or the, the Lord sets free. This was a, this was a quote out of the, uh, the Old Testament that was only to be spoken of the Messiah. Because the Jews believed when the Messiah would come, he would bring salvation, deliverance, freedom, joy, and victory for them and for the entire world. So what were they doing some 2,000 years ago, a week ago this Sunday? They were saying, this guy right here, he is the Messiah. He's the Savior of the world. Hosanna, Hosanna. Bless, and they were pointing fingers at him. They were waving the palms at him. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is it. The time is now. I mean, you, can you sense the, the buzz? Can you sense the excitement? Can you sense the anticipation rising? Not just for a few hundred uh, of his followers. There were thousands of his followers that, there that day as they were uh, watching him ride into Jerusalem on a meek and lowly donkey. I mean, they were, they, this is it. I mean, you can kind of, you know, they're, whoo-hoo, this is it. This is, the, this is the day, this is the age that our, our forefathers, the prophets, have told us about. This is the one. This is the one. And you can sense and feel the disciples' hopes and expectations begin to rise with every hoof of that little donkey. It was the moment Jesus' disciples had long been waiting for, the ushering in of the kingdom of God along with the overthrow and the outing of the Roman Empire. After all, after all, if Jesus could rebuke the wind and the waves, he could surely what? He could surely rebuke and destroy Israel's formidable foe. Jesus' followers' hopes were high with anticipation of what he was about to do for them and for their country. They were certain... The time was now, the season was upon them when their enemies would once and for all be made their footstool. Hope. Well, the reality quickly became evident within just a matter of hours that nothing like this was going to happen. In fact, the complete opposite took place. Jesus was not crowned and coronated king. He was rather crucified and executed a convicted criminal. Sadly, sometimes high hopes can lead to the greatest disappointments. The man who hundreds and thousands of people had placed their faith, their trust, and their hope in was stripped, whipped, beaten, bruised, battered beyond human recognition, and finally crucified upon Calvary's cross. This was their reality. Jesus' death, you can imagine, left his followers confused and bewildered, troubled and fearful of heart. This wasn't how it was supposed to be. This wasn't supposed to happen this way. He was going to be crowned and coronated. Instead, he was crucified and buried. Jesus' family, you can imagine, friends, disciples, were dismayed. They were depressed. They were disenfranchised by his death. The one they placed their trust within and their hope upon was gone, and with him their dream of victory and triumph. After all, what good could come out of the death of their Lord and Master? Maybe, maybe you're here today. And you've had similar thoughts, you've had similar experiences of life. You've had high expectations, high hopes of something happening in your life. And it, and it seemed to be dashed on the rocks of despair. You say, boy, pastor, that's, that's certainly me, I can relate to that. Well, then you could relate to the disciples. You could relate to Jesus' followers some 2,000 years ago. They were greatly disappointed. In fact, have you ever faced a situation or circumstance so dark with despair and defeat, there was no possible way anything good or glorious could come from it. 
the disciples of Jesus were experiencing thoughts, emotions of discouragement and depression. Their hero and their hope lay dead in a borrowed tomb. The disciples were huddled together in darkness and despair, thinking and believing nothing good, let alone glorious, is going to come from this. However, it wasn't the end of the story. The sun rose on this morning, some 2,000 years ago, the first resurrection Sunday morning, and suddenly everything changed. Little did Jesus' disciples know the one they had placed their faith, their trust, and hope in was going to be resurrected back to eternal life. There was now hope for troubled lives. Where did their hope come from? The hope came from the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Their hope came from the one who conquered death, hell, and the grave. It came from the one who was resurrected back to eternal life with all power, all authority, and all dominion at his side. Just when it looked like Hope was gone, and darkness of the soul would be their only song. Jesus arose victorious over all of his foes. Just when it looked like death had won, resurrection life sprang and dissipated the darkness with God's glorious light. When does hope come to troubled hearts and troubled lives? When does hope dissipate the darkness within our hearts and our lives? Listen to this. Hope comes to each and every person whenever they believe and receive the resurrected Son of God. Hope enters the darkened graves of our hearts and our lives the very moment we welcome the light of the resurrected Christ into our lives. Hope dispels the darkness of our depression. It dispels the darkness of despair. It dispels the darkness of discouragement and doom and gloom with God's glorious power and resurrection light. When did hope come to those troubled lives some 2,000 years ago? On the heels in the wake of Christ's resurrection. There's three, three times. Number one, hope came to troubled lives in the morning. Mark 16 says this, When Jesus arose early on the first day of the week, that Sunday morning, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, one of his followers, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him who were mourning and weeping. Those are the other disciples. And when they heard that Jesus was alive, watch their response, and that she had seen Jesus, they did not believe it. I mean, it was just too good to be true. I mean, have, have you ever received news that was just too good to be true? And, and, and this was news that just, it just was so surreal, it was too good to be true. It couldn't possibly be true. After all, they, they knew he was crucified, dead, and buried in the tomb. But hope came to a woman in the morning named Mary Magdalene. Number two, hope came to troubled lives in the noonday. Luke 24 says, now that same day, two of them, Jesus' disciples, were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. Then later their eyes were opened and they recognized him and Jesus disappeared from their sight. Hope came first in the morning to a woman named Mary Magdalene. Number two, hope came in the noonday to two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And number three, hope came to troubled lives in the evening. John 20 says, On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples, watch this now, this time, were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. So when does hope come to troubled lives? Hope comes to troubled lives whenever and wherever people encountered and experienced the resurrected Christ. Hope today will come to any troubled life regardless of age, race, gender, or ethnicity, which dares to place their faith and trust in the resurrected Christ. 
the one person who will never let you down, the one person who will never disappoint you, the one person who will never forsake you is the resurrected Christ. Is your life troubled today? Is your heart troubled today? Well, let me say, there's hope for you. There's hope for you. There's hope for me. There's hope for our world. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the hope of the world. And hope comes at the very moment. For some of us, hope came, Jesus came into our hearts in the morning. For some of us, it came in the middle of the day. For some of us, it came late at night, maybe in the midnight. But whenever you open up your heart and life to Jesus, that's when hope comes to you. And joy and peace and grace and salvation. That's when hope comes to troubled lives. As we sang today, because he lives, we can live. Because he lives, we can face the future. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Why? Because we've accepted the resurrection life and light of Jesus Christ into our hearts and lives. Jesus is our hope. John 11, verse 25, I love this verse. Jesus says, in no uncertain terms, I am the resurrection and the life. He who what? Believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Then Jesus asks a question that every human being is going to have to answer someday, and that is this. Do you believe this? Do you believe it? If you believe it, then hope will come to you and fill your heart and life. It will change and transform your world. If you don't, you've got that option. And you'll continue in your darkness and despair and depression and discouragement. But when you accept the resurrected Son of God into your heart and life, everything changes. Might not change immediately out here, but something changes in here. And God, remember this, always works from the inside out. God always works from the inside out. He changes you before he changes your circumstances. He changes your attitude before he changes your altitude. God has a wonderful way when we put our faith and trust in the resurrected Son of God of coming and bringing his glorious light into our darkness and dispelling it once and for all. It doesn't mean that darkness isn't going to come and try to knock on your heart's door. It certainly will. But you just let, let Jesus answer the door. Just remind the devil in Matthew 27, verse that he is risen indeed. He's risen indeed and he's alive in your life. Do you believe this today? Do you believe in Jesus? Romans 10, verse 9 and 11 says, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The King James Version, I like it, says this, you shall be saved. It's definitive. It's not maybe or if, it's you shall be saved. Indeed. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. The scripture goes on to say, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. In other words, when we put our faith and when we put our trust and when we put our hope in Jesus, he'll never let us down. He'll never let us down. Let me say that again. He'll never, ever, 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 ever let us down. He can't. Because he's already won the war. He's already, uh, already uh, victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And when we accept him into our hearts and our lives, we become the benefactors of that victory. Everyone, I love this, Young and old alike, male and female, black and white, red and yellow, polka dotted and striped, who places their faith in Jesus Christ will be saved. The light of God's glorious resurrection will come into their heart and life. All we have to do is receive the hope. All we have to do is invite the Lord of heaven and the Lord of life and light to come into our darkened world. And he'll do the dissipating. He'll do the removal of the dismay and the depression and the discouragement. All you have to do is, is receive the Son of the living God into your heart and life. And you shall be saved.
you shall be saved. And the wonderful thing about inviting Jesus Christ into your heart and life that I have found is that he not only gives us eternal hope, hope for the moment when we die, that we're going to go to heaven. The thing I've learned about Jesus is this, is that he not only brings and gives me eternal hope in my heart, but he gives me earthly hope. He gives us both eternal and earthly hope. In the, in the, in, in the same package, by receiving Jesus Christ in your heart and life. See, hope isn't something that we only have when we breathe our last, that we're going to go to heaven. That's eternal hope. We thank God for that. But we need hope for life. We need hope right here, right now, where the rubber meets the road. And that's what he comes and gives us as well. He gives us not only eternal hope, he gives us earthly hope. That regardless of the situation, the circumstances that you and I might be facing, there's hope that that thing can change. That circumstance, situation, predicament is alterable by and through Jesus Christ. What am I saying? I'm saying the hope for your life is Jesus Christ. The hope for your marriage is Jesus Christ. The hope for your children is Jesus Christ. The hope for America, amen, is Jesus Christ. It is. And the hope for the whole world is Jesus Christ. And someday, someday, we'll see that manifestation once and for all. So I want to encourage you this day, this Easter Resurrection Sunday morning, to embrace, to welcome and invite the resurrected Son of God into your heart and life, to receive the gift of God. For God so loved the world that He what? He gave the gift of His Son, Jesus Christ, that whoever what? Believes in Him should not perish. And that's not, again, just to talk about eternal perishing. That's perishing here and now. But He will what? Have life and that everlasting and full of glory. All you have to do and I have to do is believe in Jesus. Confess Him. You are my hope. I put my faith, my trust solely upon you. We've been given a great testament. It's called the New Testament. Uh, so we know something. We know by looking at the Bible that those people beginning 2,000 years ago on this day who put their faith and trust and hope in Jesus received exactly what I'm talking about today, and it changed their lives. And then they went out in all Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, that are most parts of the world at the time, throughout the Roman Empire, and it changed the lives of hundreds and thousands of other people. And they received the hope of the resurrected Christ. So if you and I do it, we know that we will be recipients as well. So I want to invite you today to just take a simple step of faith and put your faith, your trust, and hope in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And that through Him, the resurrection life and light of God would come into your heart and dispel the, the darkness dispel the depravity, dispel the depression, dispel the discouragement and dismay that you might be experiencing and feeling today. By receiving Jesus, everything else goes. He will do it. All you have to do is accept the gift. So I want to close today by giving you an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior. Accept the Lord of life into your heart and life. Or maybe you're here today and you just need to maybe rededicate your life. Uh, you renew your faith. Sometimes we just need to renew it and, and stir up the faith and the hope that we have in Christ. And that's wonderful. There's no greater day to do it than this day, Resurrection Sunday. Because that's what this is all about. Jesus came to give us hope and to give our world hope uh, that Things are going to change. If that's you here today, I want to lead you in a prayer. Would you bow your heads with me and close your eyes? If you'd say, Pastor Tim, yes, that's, that's me. I want to receive the light of God, the resurrection life of Jesus Christ into my heart and life. Pray this prayer with me. Simply say these words. Dear God, I come before you now, a sinner in need of your grace, Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and life 
and be my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I confess you now as my Lord. And I place my faith, I place my trust, and I place my hope in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.